Congratulations. Um, I'm far from the most serious person in the world, so we can keep this real casual and informal. I just wanted Tommy a chance to say some things and, and kind of meet a few of our media members. But uh, uh, welcome if uh, you, know, you want to give a few uh, initial or general remarks, and then I'll kind of let Steve take us here with some questions. Yeah, to start off, thank you so much. Uh, what an incredible opportunity to be here at Otterbein University. Um, first, the committee. I mean, what an incredible opportunity. Um, this school is a sleeping giant. It's been a sleeping giant for a long time. We're competitive in every sport that we play here, and it's time for football to be the same way. And when you look at that, it's, it takes a commitment. It takes a commitment by a community, a university, um, an administration who really vetted through this process and had a lot of great candidates. Um, and when, at the end of the time, it came to me, I said, good Lord, thank you. This, let's go take this opportunity, and let's go make history here at Otterbein. So we're excited about it. Back to you back here in Central Ohio. Um, this sport means a lot to me. It means a lot to my family. Um, I, I started playing coach of football right out of college. I, I knew when I played it from a young age, I was inspired by a lot of great people. Um, I get emotional thinking about it because a lot of them aren't with us anymore. But they're people that changed my life and changed who I am today. And I can't thank them enough, starting at Benedict in high school with Art Bortnick, um, Joe Chavone, Pat Conahan, as well as you know Tony Russ, the late great Augie Basu, uh, Dan O'Shaughnessy, some incredible people that poured into me. And I'm going to pour into our kids. I'm going to pour into our kids every single day, the way those men poured into me. And then I was blessed to go to Case Western Reserve University. I'm a kid whose parents didn't go to college. And when you go to a school like that, your parents kind of look at you like, you know, you got a third eye going on your forehead that you're going to be in that community. And it was the best decision I could have possibly made. Um, it had the worst price tag out of any school, uh, but it was the best decision for me and my family at that time. And I think back at it and I look at where we're at today, and it really set the tone for me where I was in the huddle with guys that are doctors and lawyers. I'm the only guy that coaches football. And it was, they always knew that about me. They always said, hey, man, you love this sport. You're going to coach it for a long time. And, you know, Joe Perella, who um, left us, you know, right during the pandemic, uh, who I was blessed to give the eulogy at his funeral, um, changed my life. He changed my life and, you know, believe, made me believe that I could be something special. I was a four-time captain there. Uh, something I, I hold very near and dear to my heart. They retired my jersey when I was done, and um, they don't do that in a lot of places. And to know you left that kind of mark, when we got there, we were in the middle of the wrong school. We were not that great. Um, but by the time I left, we played in the Sweet 16. We were like seventh in the country by the AFCA uh, coaches poll, and it just shows a testament to who we are and, and what we did. And then um, upon graduation, when I said I didn't want to go to law school, uh, everyone kind of looked at me like, seriously, you're not going to go to law school? I go, no, I'm going to go coach football. So I took a job where I didn't make a lot of money here in this conference, slept on the floor of the stadium majority of nights, and it, it changed who I am. I grew an appreciation for the sport and um, watched the way it changed so many people's lives. And I think that I get emotional about it because this football is such an agent, such a powerful agent for these young men, these guys sitting here today. Like their lives are different because of this sport. They're different because of the coaches, because of the administration, because the people that are going to pour into them for the rest of their lives. I said this this morning, I, our, our program, I'm not going to know we're great next year. I'm going to know we're great 10, 15, 20 years from now when these guys come back with their families. When they come back and show me, hey, coach, I'm doing this or I'm doing that. That's what it's about. And I'm going to surround these guys with an incredible group of people that are going to do that. Uh, I'm blessed here today because I'm surrounded by a lot of friends and family uh, that were able to be here in the area. It's an intimate setting, so family members that didn't get invited, you can blame Adam Prescott. He's got an email address you can go at. He said he'd keep it very small. Um, we would have stormed this place with a lot of different people uh, that like to eat a lot of different types of foods. But realistically, I'd, I'd like to thank uh, my in-laws are here, uh, Danny and Connie Camless, who live less than 10 minutes from here. They'll be big-time boosters and big-time supporters of our program going forward. Um, I'm here today because of them, too. They let me recruit Columbus and stay at their house. So I started recruiting Columbus, and little did I know it would rekindle a relationship with somebody that was really special to me, uh, my wife, Annalie. So thank you, Annalie, for being here. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Connie. And then my two little ones, Lenny and Bronco, who are here. Lenny usually yells touchdown a lot, so we got a lot of those to score this year, sweetheart, as you're looking up at me. So hopefully, touchdown, we'll get those hands up and, and be ready to go. Uh, but no, thank you that. And then also, I have to thank Gilmore Academy. Um, they were the first school to give me a, a, an opportunity to be a head football coach. And I think back about it, and, you know, Sean O'Toole, the athletic director there, um, you know, he and I, when we decided I was leaving, he was excited for me, but he was upset. And that's, that's a good thing. When you leave a place, they're upset you're leaving, but they're excited for what you're going to do at the next place. That's what it's about. And that's a challenge I'm going to issue our players every single day. Leave every little place that we go better than we found it. 
Today, we're going to walk around here and make sure there's no garbage on the floor. We're going to push in every chair. Our guys aren't wearing hats. They're ready to go. Like this is, These are the things that we're going to do that are little things that are going to stack. And those things stack up. Next thing you know, you have tremendous amount of success on Saturdays. And it's the same way that I learned it from every football coach that I've been around. Regis Scaife, Tom Arth, Butch Jones, and Mark Elder were the guys that gave me an opportunity to be on their staffs. And all of those guys at one point or another made me a coordinator or gave me an opportunity that maybe somebody else wouldn't. And I thank them for that opportunity. I'm looking forward to giving our coaches opportunities um, as well as our players, as well as this university as we grow and develop and soar higher. So thank you. Yeah, Coach, um, there has been some time from uh, when you accepted the job till it was announced publicly. Uh, when it was the most announced publicly, what were your emotions or reactions at the time? I think stunned. It's 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 you know you're you're sitting there and you know next thing I'm I'm, I'm running a t I was actually writing down a Spanish test for a student. So what I do in my day to day at, at Gilmore Academy is I'm the testing center coordinator. One of our students broke their wrist, so I'm in there and we're we're going through the different characters in uh, the Encanto movie. So I'm looking and I go, oh you know who's the most beautiful? I go, it's, you know, it's Isabella. I mean we know who this is. So we're putting this together as we're going through it, and. I get the call from uh, Connie, and I step out. I go, wait a second. I go, let's finish this test. I step outside, and I'm just like, whoa, like this is awesome. What an incredible experience and a great opportunity. And, you know, just, I guess, a, a sense of gratitude, a sense of gratitude that this many people believe in my mission, believe in our vision for this program, and how it co coincides with the excellence that is Otterbein University. So something that we're very proud of, something that we're you know, going to grow with, and uh, something I'm really, really, you know, that I'm going to treasure for a long time. That call, um, you get a lot of calls in your life, and you don't really, you take it for granted. Uh, that's going to be, you know, that call from Connie Richardson on my cell phone is definitely going to be something I look at for a long time, and I'm going to cherish and, and, you know, thank her every day with the way that I interact with our players, I interact with our administration, I interact with our students uh, that make this such an incredible university. Awesome. And I, just, I want to follow up uh, on that. Um, since it's been announced publicly, you know, your friends and family, you know, I'm telling them the news. And perhaps they say, why Otterbein? Uh, what's your answer to that? Potential. Is there a better place in the country to be right now? Look at Central Ohio. The growth here. People believe in Central Ohio. They're pouring into it. The companies are doing it. Different, you know, environments are doing I mean, you look at this right now. To be a young professional, there's not a better place in the world to live. So now we bring these young men here onto this campus, and our young ladies that are going to be incredible leaders in society, and now we get to use this sport as an agent in the best conference in, in Division Three athletics. I mean, the Ohio Athletic Conference is synonymous with success. I mean, multiple teams in the playoffs in every sport every year. There are trophies hoisted that don't just say OAC on it, that have NCAA logos on it in this conference every single year. It's a special place. And if you want to grow, you want to be the best you possibly can be in whatever endeavor you want, why not come compete with the best? Why not come compete in a city that you're going to develop in, you're going to grow? Right here on our campus, we have companies crawling over each other to have internship opportunities with our students. It's incredible. There's no other place in the world like it. So really blessed to be here. Yeah, uh, first of all, congratulations. Uh, you. Joe, you're here. Thanks. Um, the, obviously, with the transfer portal and how, how things have kind of changed over the entire landscape of college football, how do you distill that into DC recruiting, specifically with how you – Kind of pair that with the growth that you want to see in this program happen over the next, say, three to five years. I mean, the biggest thing with the transfer portal right now is there's there's pros and cons. The pro of the transfer portal is you made a mistake. You picked a place that maybe wasn't right for you. And you can go somewhere else, and you're not landlocked. You're not sitting there. You're not waiting to graduate. You're not waiting to sit out a year, whatever it may be. The disadvantage of it is that it also empowers our kids to have an easy way out. It's an easy way out. It's easy to walk in and out of us. Every one of us have a job. Every one of us have had jobs in our lives that you walk into that job every day and it's tough. Some jobs you love. Some jobs you're just passionate about. You go, man, this is the best job I've ever had. Other jobs you go, dear Lord, like, could something else pop for me? Our students, unfortunately, sometimes fall into that world where they just say, ah, it's an easy out for us. But it's, an, it's, it's a great way for us to obtain talent, to retain talent, and to bring young men in here that probably maybe didn't look at us right out of high school. Maybe they had visions of grandeur that there was a certain jersey show that they wanted to sign a, a certain letter of intent or they wanted to put a hat on at East Popcorn State or Mickey Mouse Tech or wherever it was going to be just because they wanted to put a hat on on signing day. Division Three Athletics isn't about that. Division Three Athletics is about finding people that are passionate and, and want to be competitive in their sport. So when they find that and they get to a certain place that doesn't work for them, that's where we have an opportunity to add to our roster. 
some of the greatest players that have ever played at Otterbein came here from somewhere else. I'm well aware of that. I've been on the other sideline many a times competing against those guys. So we have to be able to use it. We're not going to live in it. We have to live in with our, our high schools right here in central Ohio, right here in the state of Ohio. We, I mean, we are in driving distance of three, three hours of six major U.S. cities. Like, how do we not utilize those areas to bring in young men to develop talent? Football is a developmental sport. I mean, there's no sport that requires more discipline, more development over time. To think that the kids that are going to be on our campus this Saturday are going to come play for us next year is, is insane. I mean, so if they got mom, dad, and God on their side and they, they have something that they have that no one else has in this program, great, we're going to have them do that. But we have to develop them. We can't just go out and go find a Band-Aid for every little aspect of it because eventually those Band-Aids break. So we are going to use it, but more likely we are going to develop from inside and, and develop a program where kids want to come to school here, where they believe in uh, – and they, they say, you know, the worst thing I'm going to talk to our team about is that these guys, when I talk to them in the interview process, why Otterbein? I asked them that same question. And, you know, none of them said, well, it was the only school I could go to. Unfortunately, I've been at places where that's the case. And when that happens, you can't develop. You can't cultivate championship behavior because they're not – focused the way they need to be focused. Our young men are going to be focused. They're going to be driven because they want to come here. They want to be coached by our coaches. They want to the experiences we're going to have off the field as well. It's not going to be about Saturday. It's about the rest of the week for them as well. The competition. I mean, every single week. And one of the things I really love is my first year in the conference. I think when we got here, you, you, I was three and seven my first year in this conference, and I was a graduate assistant. And I was looking and I go like, "Wow, like we're not very good." But the thing that I also noticed was that the coaching continued to get better across this conference. We have incredible coaches, incredible teachers, incredible leaders. That across the board, I think almost anybody can beat anybody any given Saturday. And that's what's really exciting about the Ohio Athletic Conference. When you walk into a conference and everybody is competitive, everybody is fighting, everybody is working and clawing, going back with it, that's what it's about. You don't want to go through a season where it's 70 this, 70 this, 70 this, 70 this, and you're winning all these games by an extended amount of margin. You want to build competitive character in your kids. Every single week is something important for them. They're not going to overlook a game. They're not going to say to themselves, well, we're worried about this week or that week. Like, you have to live in the present in this conference. If not, there's that, that little margin, like, you don't win. That's what it comes down to. And I think the other thing about it is that you're going to see a lot of coaches that can recruit. The way that we're going to recruit, we're going to be at a lot of things. We're going to be at basketball games. We're going to be at wrestling matches. We're going to be, you know, at baseball games. We're going to be at track meets. You're going to see us there and go, like, the kid doesn't run the 800 till at the end of it, but you guys were there the whole time. Like, yeah, that shows we care. That shows that we want to be part of it. One of the things I talked about in my interview was I remember standing there with four other OAC coaches, a young man that I recruited that he lost in the regional championship game for basketball. And all the other coaches left. And I said, you know what, like I could hit the road or I could wait to see if he says hi to me when he walks out of the locker room. Well, guess what? That young man came over, gave me a big hug and said, I'm coming to your place. That's what it's about. That's what the OEC is about. It's about the competition. It's about the competitiveness that I think is really special. And then to watch the way the conference has grown in not just football, but all sports. You see what we've done across the board. You've celebrated 10 outstanding places for higher education, and then now watching that manifest into what the results are on Saturdays and throughout the entire week, it's special. And I think that, you know, you're going to see a lot of numbers next to teams' names, and that's what the OEC is about. Yeah. How will you define success? Like I said in my opener, I, I think success is going to be, you know, who, who we are, what you see. Like when I have – when. At the end of April, at the end of May, when our guys go home for that break, what are our alumni, or what are our alumni, what are our teachers, what are our faculty members, what are the professors here walking around, our staff members, what are they going to say about the football players? Are they going to say that these are just guys that, you know, oh, there they are, the football players again, sitting in the back of the classroom with AirPods in and hats on and hoods up and doing stuff they shouldn't be doing? Or are they going to come to me and go, wow, what a spring. What a great spring. Watching these young men grow and watching them develop. And I don't know these guys yet. Maybe they do sit in the first two rows. Maybe they do take their hat off. Maybe they always have a writing utensil. Maybe they're always polite. Maybe they hold the door. Maybe they take their hat off when they walk into a building. These are the little things that they're going to do that's going to stack up to success. But realistically, we're not going to know until 10, 15, 20 years from now. I and mean, that's what's going to happen. When they become fathers, like you could hear my daughter in the backdrop right now. Go, 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 go. She wants to go, 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 and we're going to go, 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 go. So it's important that we have the opportunity to have that ability to watch these young men grow. And I can't promise them that we're going to – I can't promise them anything tangibly right now. I can promise them a process. 
And when they fall in love with it, they embrace it every single day, they will reap the tangible benefits that coincide with it. What's the most important thing as you try to hit the ground running? Staff and uh, building staff and uh, getting to know the team? Culture. Culture. How do you build culture? You live it every day. I remember Mr. Thompson at St. Dominic's grade school, sixth grade. Way of life. I never forgot that. Like you talk about education, way of life. How do our guys live? We're going to build this program with character, humility, and love. Our players know the definitions of what character means. And John, you know, the great John Wooden once said that character is who you are when no one's looking. He missed it halfway. And I've told these guys, they're nodding their heads because they heard me say this before. It's one of my favorite things. Wooden got it half right. It's who you are constantly. You're not, you're not changed by the environment you're in. You're not changed by the world around you. You're changed. You are the change. You are the element of change. Your character is steady. It's fast in what we do. Having men that develop humility. What does humility mean to us? What's best for we, not best for me? It's real simple. What's best for me, not what's best for we? Or what's best for we, rather. I said it backwards now, guys. I apologize. But back, what's best for we, not best for me? If we can do that and act that way accordingly, we're going to be great. And then finally, love. Like, what does love look like? How do you manifest it every single day? Do you love the process? Do you love the guy next to you? Do you love the opportunity to watch him grow, to watch him develop, to watch him maximize what mom, dad, and God gave him? I think it's remarkable. And that's really the biggest thing that we're going to see going forward. That culture, as we do that, things will come with it. We're going to have incredible elite teaching skills. We've coached it at the highest level you can at the collegiate level. I have guys that are coming from all different places that know what it takes. Schematically, we are going to be cutting edge. We're going to be X's and O's through the roof. But that's great. But at the end of the day, like, there's something about a team that rolls through that has great culture. As we go sweep the locker rooms of the visiting teams that we play and we go working through this and, and understand and appreciate the opportunities we have in front of us, that's how we're going to build this thing. It's culture-driven. And when you see something that's great culture-wise, you want to be part of it. Like, you see that and you go, oh, I, 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 oh, I want a piece of that right now. You go put down, you know, we put down whatever the best food in Columbus is right there smack dab in the table. Everyone's eyes are going to go to that, not to me, because they want a part of that. They want a piece of that. Whatever it is, you want a piece of that culture. You want to be part of it. You want to embrace it. So that's really important for us, and it's going to start day one and today when I get to meet with this team at 430. Is there one more about a uh, question for uh, your message to alumni of the program? Um, you know, assuming you haven't met most of, if mm -hmm. not any of them, uh, what can they expect from you, and, and how will you embrace them? Come back. Come back. Uh, we're going to recruit, we're going to retain, and we want our guys to return. We're going to deal with our players all the time. But it's important that we bring them back into the program. On Saturdays, there's a place down the street that a lot of people like to go that you can't all go there. Come see us. Come see this cutting-edge football that we're going to play. Come see our young men. Get to know them. We're going to get an email list of all of our alumni, and we're going to send out weekly introductions to our players, like what they're doing right now. we got three guys back here right now. We're going to talk about them. We're going to celebrate them. Let's connect them with our alumni population. How do we get them to grow closer to our program? Meet the roots of it. Meet our players. Get to shake their hands. Look them in the eye. Understand who they are. And when you come back here, get that feeling you have of ringing that bell in that end zone because that's the biggest thing. You've rang that bell. Come ring the bell with them. And that's what we're going to continue to do, and it's really important that those guys understand it's an open door for them to come back and be part of this program. I'll leave you with two things here. You did a lot on the interview process. I know one of the best parts was meeting these three guys and a few others in that, in that small group of student athletes. Um, I guess, what do you remember from that, and how excited are you for 4 o'clock here to meet the rest of them? I was just excited. I mean, like, you sit in this room, and you sit down, and, 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 and appreciation to them. They don't know me from Adam. They have no idea who these people are. They sit down. And it's like each guy, you could tell it clicked as we went through it. Some guys, you know, a minute or two in, they're like, whoa, three minutes, four minutes, you know, five minutes. Some guys in the back, I had to work a little bit longer, but eventually gave me that smile. And I go, all right, these are my guys. They, they understand what it's about. And I think when you get that feeling and you know that somebody is going to fight for you on both ends, the way I'm going to fight for them, the way they're going to fight for us, it's a special relationship. And I've got a lot of work to do. I got to know what makes these guys tick. I got to understand who is the most important person in their life. Who do they love the most? And how do they, how do they represent them? It's going to be really important. We're going to do some philosophical stuff at first that they're going to go, well, what is this commitment to excellence? What is this all about? And then they're going to look at it and they're going to build upon it. You know, it's going to be really exciting and humbling to be their leader. I feel like Bronco Zagorski is just destined to be a standout nose guard someday. Uh, just thoughts on, on your kids growing up in this environment. A lot of us preach family and have young kids as well. I guess just your excitement for that. It's a big part of it. I mean, it's, it's a huge part of it. I mean, I... I would be lying to you if not, like, my, my wife today, we got off at Polaris, and she just, like, went from, like, and she was not, like, she wasn't upset, but she was just kind of, like, 
driving and we're listening to music, she smiles and just lights up like a Christmas tree. Because this is home. This is where our family's at. This is where we've celebrated Christmas. It's where we bring our little ones home to see their grandparents, to see their relatives, to see their siblings, to see people that they love that are important to them. These kids are going to grow up. My kids right now, you can hear them right now. That's how it's going to be all the time. They're around all the time. I'm on the phone with a recruit the other night, and he's like, wow, coach, you got a lot of kids. I go, only two, but they're loud. They're fun. And, and, they're gonna, and you're going to get to meet them. Like, they're part of the program. Our family is invested in this. It's not just a job. It's a vocation. And when your kids grow up in it, and they're around it every single day, they see what it looks like. They see what it feels like. Like, I'm so excited that one day my wife's going to pick somebody like those three guys to be her husband. To have that opportunity. Like, that's important to me. That's important to me that she's going to be around those types of people. And also, they get to see what it's like to be a father. What does it look like? What does it feel like? I proposed to my wife in front of 100 football players. I got to do that because of this sport. And every one of those guys that's gotten that has proposed since then, they call me. They're like, Coach, it's not Vatican City, but, man, this is what we're going to do. Like, it's important. Like, you have to be a representative of, like, what their lives are going to look like. What are they going to emulate? Maybe they see certain things I do that they go, ah, I'm not doing that. You know, whatever it may be, but it allows them to have that opportunity. So it's important that my kids are able to grow. They're able to develop in this, and they're going to be there standing there um, ready to go on Saturdays. Good. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.